I am going to take a break and make some lunch. I'm gonna show you the recipe and then just never buy aioli from the store again. Kilo's really into this. I think the combination of flavors is sublime. This recipe is the one that I get asked most about. You might hear a lot of different things right now. I'm filling up my water kettle. My fan is freaking out because my solar is still messing up. That's the really fast beeping that you hear. And there's a road right behind me and you might hear some of that road noise. All with that said though, man, life is so good. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Morning Nomad. I have spent the last few hours doing some computer work and taking care of another podcast episode, a lot of emails, and I am going to take a break and make some lunch. I set out my venison from my freezer last night to make sure that it was all thawed. And I'm pretty excited about this because I've been learning some better techniques for cooking venison, you know, just making sure that it's not really dry and some tricks to cut some of the gaminess. So I'm going to try a few different things with the burgers today. Lucky for me, it stopped raining so I get a little bit more light in here with my door open. But I'm going to work on making some homemade garlic aioli. This is such a simple thing to make at home. I'm going to show you the recipe and then just never buy aioli from the store again because this is way more delicious anyway. So the reason that I put the beans out to soak all day is because there is a leftover chicken carcass. So 
Chris and I had come into town and we just needed to stock up on groceries. And one of the things that I like to do is get a rotisserie chicken from the store because that way I really look forward to eating that when I get home so I don't buy a bunch of other junk to snack on. So I got a rotisserie chicken and I made some um, chicken sandwiches out of the breast meat. For those chicken sandwiches, I bought rolls that I had then used those extra rolls as hamburger buns when I made the venison burgers that you saw. So I really like to buy things that can be utilized for a few different meals to eliminate waste. So same thing with the chicken carcass. I really like using a bean soup mixture in my homemade chicken soup. And I'm going to work on pulling all of this meat off. I remember watching my mom do this like being a little girl and my mom sitting at our kitchen table late at night just like picking apart a chicken carcass. <laughs> I used to think it was the grossest thing ever. I always loved the soup though. But I think that it's funny that, that we learn to really appreciate and cherish the things that our parents unintentionally taught us I guess. So I'm picking off all this meat and I'm going to leave all of the bones and the skin in the pot. Some of these really tiny bones I'm going to take out just so that I don't have to worry about fishing them out after. Because I quite honestly hate crunching on bones that weren't fished out properly. Akil is really into this, aren't ya? No bones for you. So of course if you're doing this at home with a more traditional kitchen, you could simmer this for, you know, six hours and make a really awesome stock. I'm not going to do that because I cook with propane and um, my system isn't super efficient. Chris's is much more efficient, so I'm actually going to boil the carcass for a little bit over in his kitchen. Alright, this has been simmering for, oh, probably two and a half hours, and now I'm going to take out all of the bones and the chunks of skin that I don't want in the soup. Losing my goods. I'm so well. <laughs> okay. And just like that, it is a new day, and I'm getting ready to make some lunch. I one of my go-to things is just to purchase frozen Alaskan salmon and keep it in my freezer. I love either doing one of two things. Either I pan sear it and put pesto on top or I'll do just a really simple blackened seasoning which is my favorite. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I love pairing meat side of vegetables. So I have all these sweet potatoes and I'm just gonna chop them up, throw them in a pan with some spices. This is such an easy lunch pretty typical for me in the van to make something like this for lunch. Potatoes are looking really good. The fish is prepped. 
Uh, I only really use one pan and then I just have a really small little pot so often some things are ready before others and I just don't mind at all but I really have to eat this avocado today is like the last day so I'm just gonna slice it up and add it to our plates. I don't really like just plain avocado but it's better than wasting it. Oh perfect look at that. I can imagine that maybe you guys are thinking, how does she have the time and energy to cook all of those meals? And sometimes I don't. Sometimes I make mac and cheese, or sometimes I eat cereal, or whatever I have left because I don't wanna go shopping. And sometimes I have weeks or days where I make really good food and my body feels amazing and I have the energy to do it. Also, it's not necessarily super easy to do in a tiny kitchen, but I love my house and I love my kitchen, I think because I built it, so all of the little frustrations that I think a lot of people would feel, I don't <laughs> because I just love my space and I'm very tolerant of it. I also tend to make sure that when I go grocery shopping, I buy a lot of really good whole foods and that makes me pretty motivated to find delicious recipes or mostly I just reuse the same recipes. I'm hungry, I think Chris is hungry, so we are going to enjoy this beautiful meal of salmon and potatoes and avocado and I'll catch you later. Hello again. So I'm actually on the road right now. While this isn't really a meal, I'm gonna show you basically my favorite road snacks. Um, I'm going to stop right now for a little bit and get some work done. And Akil's eating a late breakfast. So this is what I kind of like to do when I don't wanna take out my stove, I don't wanna heat my van up too much. I just want something delicious, kinda healthy. So basically this is my lunch. Scooch your buddy. Scooch. Big girl. Then I top it with everything bagel seasoning and I like to add red pepper flakes just for a little bit of spice. And cutting away some of this wood so that he can ground out the batteries. Hello. Wow, my hair is a little wild. It's been quite a day. I'm currently in Montana and doing everything I can to kill every single mosquito here in my van. There's one right here. I got him. Anyway, back to recipes. I'm about to make my absolute favorite salad. And you might be thinking, well, that's boring. Everybody knows how to make a salad. And you might be right. But I think that not all salads are created equal. So I'm going to show you my absolute favorite go-to salad. I think the combination of flavors is sublime. What's super fun about today is I'm going to add, you know, some different things than normal because I just went into town and spent a part of the day at a really beautiful farmers market and uh, I'm gonna include some of that really fresh local produce in the salad too we are going to start where most people end so since I live in a tiny space I try to create the least amount of dishes possible so I'm actually starting with the dressing I've heard people say that making homemade dressing is too much of a pain no it's not with a few very simple ingredients you can make a really delicious dressing so we're just gonna start with that you may have noticed this by now but I don't really measure anything so um, yeah all right let's do this I am throwing some chicken on my pan so that cooks while I cut all my veggies. Jingle. All right, veggie time.
there are two more very important steps that you cannot forget for this because it is so good. Whenever I have almonds, I roast them in the pan that I cooked the chicken in. I am back again for a very late lunch, early dinner, just the big meal for the day. This recipe is the one that I get asked most about. This is what I turn to when I want like ultimate comfort food and just really good flavor. We've got an Aquila butt here in our face. It's a cute butt. Also, this is going to sound complicated and I promise it is not. This is chicken with spicy lemon garlic cream sauce. I am making enough for two people and I eat a lot. So I often make large batches of food and just eat it throughout the day or have leftovers because man, leftovers are so underrated. I mean, what is easier than just pulling out a, a, a fully cooked meal and just warming it up on a stove? It's just, anyway, I'm going to saute my onions. The most important ingredient for sauteed onions is patience. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, golden, I'll follow them. Golden, 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 golden things. Mountain laurel high fives for miles in spring. Rainbow trout and hummingbird. There you have it. Those are some of my favorite meals to make in the van. Sometimes my meals are super simple and sometimes I like to put a lot of love and energy into the things that I eat. I'm also extra uh, blessed now to have a 60 liter freezer so that I can store large quantities of meat or butter or sometimes ice cream. And I get a little bit more variety and space to, to store different things in my van. I hope that you enjoyed this vlog. It took a long time for me to kind of fit all these pieces together and share these recipes with you guys. But if you like it, please let me know. I can do another one like this in the future with more recipes. And I hope you enjoy trying some of these in your full kitchen or in your tiny home kitchen or whatever you may have. And with that, Kiel and I will say goodbye. We have some really exciting news to share next vlog, mostly about food again. So, thanks for joining us, and we will see you next week. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun.